I don't believe this. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments with the guys on The Big Bang Theory. Sorry. <laughs> Better. They say that boys will be boys, and for this list, we'll be picking out the best Big Bang moments without the girls, and featuring at least three of the show's main men. What are your favourite guy moments from the show? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Scaring Sheldon It's Halloween season, and Sheldon is working late at the university when he hears a spooky voice calling his name. <laughs> He heads out into the hallway and encounters a number of scare pranks that he tries to pretend don't bother him at all. Oh, the walls are dripping blood, which looks nothing like a phenol phthalene indicator exposed to a sodium carbonate solution. Eventually, Howard and Raj emerge laughing, but Sheldon refuses to admit he was scared. <laughs> you should have seen your face. <laughs> yes, there's nothing quite like the slightly widened eyes of mildly startled. But as they head back to Sheldon's office, it's Leonard's turn to finish him off. And with the help of an alien mask and the element of surprise, he does just that, causing Sheldon to faint, and then some. <laughs> Who had money on faints? Uh, I had BS bands. <laughs> Hang on. Looks like everyone's a winner. Number nine, fencing. The Big Bang guys are very, very smart, but also very, very unathletic. You really think sports is the right choice for you? What are you saying? We're not coordinated enough to play sports? Okay, <clears throat> Leonard, sweetheart. You twisted your ankle playing Scrabble. So when they decide to get more exercise, they have a hard time finding a sport that interests them. That is, until they see that Barry Kripke has started a fencing club. And I would imagine it meets many of our personal criteria for a sport. It's indoors, so no sunscreen. <laughs> no throwing, no catching, no running. <laughs> No gym shorts that can be yanked down. Given that, among other things, fencing doesn't require running, jumping, or catching, it sounds good to them. And it's good for us, too, from Howard and Raj's Princess Bride references. My name is Amigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> my name is Amigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. To the wild fighting when Kripke's back is turned and Sheldon wanting to touch his friends, Whenever you watch this episode, be on guard for laughs. Notice my dominant wag faces forward. Oh dear. What's wrong, Koopa? Yeah, well, I'm not sure I have a dominant leg. They're both pretty submissive. Number eight, tasty cookies. While most of us would be wary that cookies baked by women driving a micro bus and wearing Grateful Dead t-shirts would have a little something extra, Howard, Raj, and Leonard aren't. Okay, the best I can tell, there are eight other campsites nearby, mostly science nerds like us. But just over Yon Ridge are two not unattractive middle school teachers who reek of desperation. When the three of them head out to the desert to see a meteor shower, Howard does a little lady recon for him and Raj, and brings back cookies from a couple of tie-dye wearing teachers. Mm, not bad. Yeah, very tasty. Wait, but so tell me more about these teachers. Mm, not much to tell. They had a VW microbus and were wearing tie-dyed Grateful Dead t-shirts. The guys naively chow down on the treats and soon after are all high as a kite and revealing all kinds of personal details, including Raj's rabbit power fantasy, Leonard's problem with his name, and Howard's first sexual partner. It has nerd in it. <laughs> Len Nerd. <laughs> I lost my virginity to my cousin Jeannie. Raj even helps Leonard out by using his mind to slow the Earth's rotation. I can feel the Earth moving. <laughs> it's moving too fast. Raj, slow it down. <laughs> Number seven, Leonard's bachelor party. We will, we will percussive shock you. <laughs> We will, we will percussive shock you. Because Leonard and Penny eloped, Leonard didn't get to have a bachelor party. 
So Howard and Raj organize a surprise one for the four guys in Mexico. We are going to Mexico! Fun! I've never been there! Leonard, don't be fooled. I'm from Texas. Mexico is Spanish for Mexico. Of course, Sheldon is not at all excited about the idea. That is, until he finds out they're driving there in physicist Richard Feynman's van and are going to stay in his house. We are going to Mexico in Feynman's van to stay at the vacation house Feynman bought with the money from his Nobel Prize. Viva la emodium! Ay, ay, ay! Well, they were going to stay in his house, but they get a flat tire and never make it there. And while that sucks for them, it's great for us because it provides viewers with a very funny series of scenes in which the guys try to remove a stuck lug nut, with the last problem being, as they say in Mexico, muy caliente. You put up a good fight, lug nut, but you've met your match. <laughs> Number 6. Vegas Baby Besides introducing your so money into every college dude's lexicon, the movie Swingers also taught us that Las Vegas is the place to go to get over a breakup. Baby, you are so money and you don't even know it. So that's exactly where Leonard and Raj take Howard when he gets unceremoniously dumped by Leslie Winkle. And her call waiting beeped and she was gone. <laughs> Although Howard initially doesn't want to leave the room, the guys lure him down with the promise of huge shrimp and keep him there with the help of a certain someone they met at the bar. Boy, would it maybe kill them to put out a nice brisket? <laughs> Hi there, Howard Wallowitz. It all makes for a memorable episode, one that'll be referenced by the characters themselves later on this list. It was lovely meeting you. Best of luck in your future endeavors. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, I miss her already. Number five, Howard's big idea. How's this all gonna work? Do we get a nanny? Can we afford a nanny? If we can, we can't get a pretty one because it'll wreck our marriage. <laughs> We can't get an ugly one because it'll scare the kid. Howard has always wanted kids, but when he finds out Bernadette is pregnant, he goes from super excited to super freaked out pretty quickly. And do you have any idea how expensive having a kid is? Yeah, I read that in Los Angeles, raising a child through college can cost over a million dollars. A million dollars? It's like my nuts just kicked me in the nuts. To help him relax, the guys take him out to a bar, and over drinks accessorized with little umbrellas, Howard comes up with the idea for the infinite persistence guidance system. Wow, never thought about that. And since it's in a quantum state, it would maintain an infinite persistence. Groundbreaking revelations, tropical drinks, tell me this isn't like the best episode of Sex in the City. Also at the bar, Sheldon gets drunk, thinks the kitchen is the bathroom, and offers to beat up the bartender. And he also proves that, even when filled with alcohol, he's still smarter than everyone. Even drunk, he's still smarter than all of us. <laughs> and stronger. Who wants to see me beat up the bartender? I'd enjoy that. Nah, she's a good kid. Number four, Bakersfield Comic Con. No, the Bakersfield Comic Con isn't as good as the San Diego Comic Con, but for these guys, Comic Cons are like pizza. Even the bad ones are good. Well, then why are you going? It's a comic book convention. Yeah. It's like pizza or particle accelerators, even the stinky ones, still pretty good. So they grab their Trek costumes and head off for Bakersfield. Unfortunately, as with their road trip to Richard Feynman's house in Mexico, they never make it to the convention. What's wrong with people? Why don't they stop? Maybe we're better off. You know, what if we were to get in a car with a crazy person? Look at us, Sheldon. We're the crazy people! Although this time, it isn't a flat tire that stops their progress, but rather Leonard's car being stolen while they're in the midst of a photo shoot. Oh my god, Leonard, someone's stealing your car! What? Hey! Hey! Come back here! Oh, stealing is against the law! Seeing them walk into a diner in full Trek garb will make you laugh and feel sorry for them all at the same time. Four glasses of water, please. Anything for you guys? <laughs> Can I use your phone? Our car got stolen. Why don't you ask Scotty to beam you up? Number three, breaking the elevator. 
For this moment, we want to take you back to 2003, when Leonard had long hair, Howard had a perm, Raj wanted to be Sonny Crockett from Miami Vice, apparently, and Sheldon was even more wooden and robot-like. Yes? Uh, I'm Leonard Hofstetter. I called you about the apartment. You said it could I know what I said. I know what you said. I know what my mother said on March 5th, 1992. Yes, in this episode, we get a flashback to when Leonard first moved in with Sheldon. You may enter. <laughs> This is pretty nice. The scene where they sign their first roommate agreement is great. But maybe the most important revelation in the episode is when we finally find out how that darn elevator broke. Okay, I've had it with you. You might be an expert on theoretical physics and science fiction programs and where to sit on a freaking couch, but this is applied physics. And when it comes to applied physics, uh, uh, oh. And that moment involves all four of the guys. Although Howard and Raj are merely witnesses to Leonard's big oopsie and Sheldon's day-saving heroism. What'd you do that for? I had plenty of time. <laughs> You're welcome. Number two, the time machine. In season one, Leonard buys a time machine. Five, snipe. Four, snipe. Three, snipe. Two, snipe. One, ah. Oh, congratulations. You are the proud owner of a miniature time machine. Okay, so it isn't a real time machine, but it is a full-size replica of the time machine from the classic sci-fi movie, The Time Machine, which for these guys is super cool. Oh yeah. The guy who lives next to me is always like, I have a jacuzzi on my balcony. I have a jacuzzi on my balcony. But wait until I tell him, I've got a time machine on my balcony. And it only gets better once they finally get the thing up the stairs into the apartment and take it for a test drive. As Leonard pulls back on the lever and the big wheel starts to spin, Howard, Raj and Sheldon do their best moving quickly through the future impression. Here we go into the future. <laughs> The scene is brilliantly funny, even if you've never seen the 1960 film. But if you have, then you get the reference and might appreciate it even more. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Kissing Simulator. Leonard's mother wouldn't be surprised to see this. Really get your tongue in there to activate the motion sensor. <laughs> like this? Close. Really French it. Music from 2001, A Space Odyssey. Stanley Kubrick would be proud. <laughs> the guys go to their first party at Penny's. When you start a party at 7, these guys get there at 7. Or 7.05. It's 7.05! And you said the party starts at 7. Well, yeah, I mean, when you start a party at 7, no one shows up at, you know, 7. <laughs> It's 7.05. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Sometimes hitting refresh over and over still doesn't get you Comic-Con tickets. Anyone in? No! <laughs> Do not stop refreshing your screen. Refresh, 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 refresh. Pigeon in the clean room. It turns out that pigeons do like Slim Jims. Your plan has the words garbage bag and Slim Jim in it. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Oh, the genius here wants to catch a bird with a garbage bag and a Slim Jim. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Howard's bachelor party. At the end of the fifth season, Howard gets married, but this time a preliminary bachelor party is thrown. And although Barry Kripke is disappointed that there aren't any strippers, we have no complaints about this hysterical moment. What time did the strippers arrive? <laughs> Actually, Barry, we're not going to have strippers tonight. Ah, uh, then what the frick did I get $200 in singles out for? To celebrate Howard's pending nuptials, each of his friends say a few words about the man of the hour. First, Sheldon roasts him, Bazinga. I always thought you'd be the last one of us to ever get married because you are so short and unappealing, am I right? <laughs> then Leonard, angry that Penny doesn't think he can get crazy, brags about having sex in the ocean. I was with this girl at the beach. <laughs> we were in the ocean and we started making out. 
I know, it's crazy. And then there's Raj, who gives the room a rundown of the women Howard has been with. And you know what they say, it's all fun and games until your fiancé sees the video online. You know, we're not that far from my apartment. If you stop the car, I can walk from here. <laughs> you ain't going anywhere, three-way. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.